We're going to talk a little bit more about protein synthesis inhibitors. So what are the targets for protein synthesis inhibition? We can block the formation of mRNA. We can block the ribosomal reading of the mRNA. We can block various parts of the 30S and 50S ribosomal subunits, including peptidyl transferase, as well as translocation. There's a simple mnemonic to help remember which antibiotic works at which part of the ribosome, because that part does get a little bit complicated. It's, you know, in general, what you would do with stocks. You would buy at 30 and sell at 50. So buy at 30, it's AT30. A stands for the aminoglycosides and tetracyclines. And one thing to know is that aminoglycosides are bactericidal. Tetracyclines are bacteriostatic. So those work at the 30S ribosomal subunit. The 50S subunit drugs are all bacteriostatic. So just remember that they're all static. And the way you remember that is cell at 50. And cell is not S-E-L-L, -L, but it's a little bit you know harder to remember, maybe. C-C-E-L-L, -L, two C's, two L's. Those stand for chloramphenicol, clindamycin, erythromycin, lincomycin, and linezolid. By the way, all of these antibiotics are good for intracellular bugs because they work at the intracellular level. In order to block protein synthesis, it has to get inside past the cell membrane, past the cell wall. So if you have, let's say, a rickettsial illness, which is inside our cell, it can get through cell membranes, no problem with these drugs. So it's able to get in to our cell and then penetrate the bacterial cell. So that's when you would use something like that. So with that said, let's describe some of these in greater detail. Aminoglycosides, they include gentamicin, neomycin, amicacin, tobramycin, and streptomycin. Basically, it's all the mycins with the exception of erythromycin and clindamycin. So if you just remember it that way. They only work on aerobes, not anaerobes. The reason is that they require oxygen for the uptake of the drug into the cell. The way it works is that it causes misreading of the mRNA. It's a very narrow spectrum. They work on gram negatives. The adverse reactions to aminoglycosides are nephrotoxicity, specifically acute tubular necrosis. It also, just like vancomycin, causes ototoxicity. And it also is a bad teratogen. It can cause birth defects. The next one is tetracycline. The tetracyclines include doxycycline and demiclocycline. And we have to remember, by the way, separately, demiclocycline is an ADH antagonist. So it causes basically nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which is useful for controlling SIADH, right? Symptom of inappropriate ADH release. And also another tetracycline is minocycline. So it prevents the attachment of the tRNA to the 30S subunit of the ribosome. So just remember, you know, there are all these things happening in protein synthesis, and this is just yet another thing we can block. We can block the binding of the tRNA to the ribosomal subunit. And just remember, tetracycline, tRNA. They both start with T. Tetracycline blocks the tRNA. It's absorbed through the gut as it's very sensitive to the charge in the gut. So you have to avoid divalent cations. What does that mean? No calcium, no magnesium, no iron. So in general, it has to be taken separately from milk, from antacids, from iron supplementation, and from vitamins in general. What do we use it for? It's used for non-gonococcal urethritis, for mycoplasma pneumonia, for Lyme disease, for rickettsial infections as well. What are the adverse effects? includes discoloration of the teeth, photosensitivity, and it's absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy. So we just described aminoglycosides and tetracyclines. Again, these both work at the 30S subunit of the ribosome. It's at 30. Now we're going to talk about the 50S subunits. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is macrolides. These include erythromycin, and by the way, that is the cell at 50 that includes not just erythromycin, but all the macrolides. Erythromycin, azithromycin, and clarithromycin. They block translocation of the ribosome at the 50S subunit. They're excellent for atypical pneumonia. As a matter of fact, azithromycin is the drug of choice for atypical pneumonia. The adverse effect, though, it lengthens QT interval in cardiac conduction. And just remember from your cardiac physiology that a long QT syndrome can progress to torsades. So you have to worry about that here. It can cause cholestatic hepatitis in little kids. And it is a CYP inhibitor. 
So watch out for drug interactions at the level of the liver. So you have to watch out for things like theophylline, phenytoin, warfarin, among other things. Next one we're going to talk about is chloramphenicol. It blocks peptidyl transferase at the 50S subunit. Remember, peptidyl transferase, it links the amino acids together during protein synthesis. It's typically used for the normal bugs that cause meningitis in a regular adult. It's excreted in the bowel. Just keep that in mind, right? Through biliary tract excretion. So the adverse effects include aplastic anemia and gray baby syndrome. And the reason is that they do not have glucuronyl transferase. So it's kind of like a Krigler najjar syndrome. The last one is clindamycin. It has the same target as macrolides. So that means that it blocks translocation of the 50S subunit. It's specifically the 23S subunit on the 50S subunit. It's good for anaerobes above the diaphragm. It's an easy way to remember it. It's very often given for dental prophylaxis. An adverse effect is Clostridium difficile infection afterwards, the bacterial overgrowth of C. diff. So that's it for the anti-protein synthesis drugs.